Mike Picelli here. For this lesson, I'll be talking about the Beatles' recording of Day Tripper that they did in October of 1965. Now, the guitar riff in Day Tripper is probably the most loved by Beatles fans. It was written by John Lennon and said to be inspired by uh, Bobby Parker's song, Watch Your Step, which had also been his model for I Feel Fine. The actual song was written mostly by John Lennon with help from Paul uh, in September of 1965. Day Tripper was written to order because the Beatles needed a new 45 at the end of 1965. And it ended up as a double A-sided 45 alongside of We Can Work It Out. About the song, John has said, It wasn't a serious message song. It was a drug song. In a way, it was a Day Tripper. I just like the word. I've always needed a drug to survive. The other Beatles too, but I always had more. I always took more pills and more of everything. Because I'm more crazy. Day trippers are people who go on day trips, right? Usually on a ferry boat or something, but the song was kind of, you're a weekend hippie. Get it? And Paul McCartney is on record saying, day tripper was to do with tripping. Acid was coming in on the scene, and often we do these songs about the girl who thought she was it. So, she's a big teaser was, she's a prick teaser. But this was just a tongue-in-cheek song about someone who was a day tripper, a Sunday painter. Sunday driver, somebody who was committed only in part to the idea, whereas we saw ourselves as full-time trippers, fully committed drivers. She was just a day tripper. October 16, 1965, the Beatles are at EMI Studio 2 in the midst of what would become the Rubber Soul album, and when they get around to Day Tripper on that day, they do three takes, take three is the best, with the usual lineup, John and George on guitar, Paul on bass, and Ringo on drums. And then they did overdubs, and the overdubs were uh, John and Paul doing their lead vocals and double tracking their lead vocals at times. Uh, John, Paul, and George did some background vocals. Uh, George overdubbed his solo, and he double tracked the uh, main guitar riff, and John played tambourine. Fun facts to know and tell. On the third verse, when the chord changes to A, it sounds like George flubs the first note of the guitar riff. But in actuality, it more sounds like a taping error, like maybe on an overdub or the machine screwed up for a moment. But on that uh, also third verse, when they sing Sunday Driver, on one of the tracks you could hear John singing One Day Driver, maybe being confused with the uh, one-way ticket. Uh, anyhow, the song was mixed on October 25th. Uh, they did some promotional films for it. On uh, November 1st, they mimed it at uh, Granada TV Center in Manchester. And on November 23rd, they did three versions of uh, Day Tripper uh, at Twickenham Film Studios. Day Tripper was part of the Beatles' live repertoire from 1965 until they uh, quit touring. And on December 3rd, 65, it was released in the UK uh, on that 45 along with uh, We Can Work It Out. And June 20th, 1966, uh, Capitol released it on an album called Yesterday and Today. So that's the backstory. Let's get started. <music> John Lennon is playing his Rickenbacker 325 on Day Tripper, and although George's uh, signature guitar uh, riff is what's really driving the song along, John's unique rhythm really helps propel the, uh, the, the rhythm section. So, um, and it's very unique in that the use of the chords. So basically it's just E to E7 and then A for, for most part of the intro and the verse. But it's unique the way he plays his E and his E7. Um, it's like he plays a power E chord, which would be root, third, and an octave. And then he picks up his pinky to get the seventh. So that's basically the sound. However, he's bending his finger up so that the second and first string ring out. So you hear it. Right? and in a very unique way. So to play the song, you'll need again an E chord. You'll need that E7. And you'll need, uh, for the first verse, uh, a first position A, and an A7. You're going to need an F sharp seventh. You'll need an A7 up here also. A G sharp seventh. A C sharp seventh and a B seven. 
So when John f comes in on the uh, fourth measure of the intro uh, riff, he, he, he uses an up, up uh, stroke on that E chord on the end of four. So it's two, three, four. And then he's into the song. Now don't don't fret, pun intended. Uh, if you if you can't get that E7 and everything perfectly clean, because he doesn't either. Sometimes it's just almost like a muted sound on the E7, but that's what he's going for. When the verse starts, uh, the rhythm is like this. Then he switches to A7, which is. Um, and he's, he's, first he plays a straight A and then some open strings to the A7. Very slowly, the first A measure is. Back to E. Two E7s and two E's that time. To the F sharp. Now on the second beat of the F sharp chord, it's kind of muted or played staccato-like. So you play a low note. Very Lennon-ish. Uh, up to A7, G sharp 7th, and then the first time he slides all the way up to here. So that's the first verse, and um, the, uh, the, uh, that's the first verse. <laughs> Let me play you, I'll play you the first verse in its entirety so you can, you can get a better grip on it. Sounds like this, first verse. And then uh, George plays the uh, signature riff again, and John comes in on the third measure, again with an upstroke on that E chord. And verse two begins. And let me just play a, I'll play a verse two kind of slow so you get a grip on verse two. Sounds like this. Now he goes to an A7 uh, up here and plays like this. And that time E7, E, E7, E. To the uh, F sharp. A little different rhythm on the F sharp 7th. He plays like this. He goes. Up to the A7, and this time anticipating on the G sharp 7th. So now you can tell here he plays a different C uh, sharp 7. He plays it here, and the B7 will be here. Oh, it's actually just a regular B this time. So and and he slides into that C sharp 7. And then open strings. And then it's like almost like an A over B. So let's do from the F sharp. Okay. Now the bridge is like the solo, and it's very unique what the chords that John is, uh, is using. Um, he starts off on a regular B, and then to a, a partial B7, just like this. To a B suspended. To this B. To this B7. And then when he's pounding at the end, it's just, uh, it's three B notes. Like that. 
So that bridge sounds like this. Three, four. And then, of course, comes in the big riff by George again. John starts on the third measure playing. And verse 3 starts. And verse 3 would be, let's see here. Now he's back to first position A, and he goes... And that A, slowly. Back to the E. With the seven to the E again. F sharp, just like on the very first time with the short second beat. Slide up to the A7. Again, sliding into that C sharp 7. And this time a B7. And it hits an E real quick. Charts and tabs will make it a lot clearer than I can say it or play it. Uh, but on the very end, it's even another rhythm on that E. So on the fade out, after three measures of, uh, of George playing the lick and Paul, John plays this, he goes, um... All the way out. Again, charts and tabs will make it so much clearer, but that's what John played on Day Tripper. <laughs> George Harrison is playing his Sonic Blue Fender Stratocaster on Day Tripper, and it's that uh, iconic riff that we all know and love. It's very simple. It's an E, G, G sharp, B, E, D, B, F sharp, B, D, E. And it's all picked downstrokes, no hammer-ons, every note is picked all down. And it, it goes like that until when the, when the chords change to A, you just play the same riff uh, up uh, a, uh, a, a fourth. Back to down to E. And then uh, here's where he has some changes. On the F sharp, the first time he plays like this. I'll do this very slow. He goes. Slides up to the A. G sharp. C sharp, B. So again, a little bit more up to speed on that first F sharp part. Three, four. And then back to the signature riff. Uh, two times, and for the verse, again, two times, four times, or is it two times? Two times with it to the A, to the E, you know. Then the A. E. And on the F sharp the second time, 
he holds it uh, for a whole note for the first measure, so it's. I'll do. I'll just do that slow for you. He holds it for a first measure. He goes. up to speed on that sound like this three four and then which is really the bridge but where he also overdubbed the solo he plays just basically a, a, an E scale but he starts on the on the fifth, which is B, and he plays on um, on beat two, and you know to some degree it sounds like it's a volume control pedal, but I've I can simulate it by just using heavy compression, letting the compressor do do its work to to make simulate the sound. Any any road, <laughs> the bridge is like this. So he plays on beat uh, two. He plays one two three four one one. Two, three, And then back down to the uh, the riff again. Verse three, play that riff again uh, two times, three times, a hundred times, <laughs> two times, right? Uh, verse three. <laughs> Right here on this, uh, where the chords change to A, you don't hear his first A, so you hear one. And then the third F sharp, he's playing like this. He plays on beat one, one, two, three, four. Signature riff on E all the way out. Charts and tabs will make it clearer than I can say it or play it, but that's what George did during the rhythm recording of Day Tripper. <laughs> My ear, the solo was uh, recorded in uh, two separate overdubs. Uh, the first six measures are just basically the riff played in the key of B. So you play a, a root fifth of a B, then hammer on. And I like to get that last A to B with my first finger to my fourth finger. So I can easily place my fingers down to get the uh, power chord B. So very slowly. It's a high B. And then the second part almost sounds like the tone is different, and it's not just because it's on higher strings. Uh, it almost sounds like Paul McCartney may have played it. It's definitely Paul McCartney influence, and the line is. So the whole solo very slowly is. up to speed
I suggest you download the charts and tabs at MikePacelli.com. Learn all the parts and you'll get it just like the Beatles. And I really appreciate your consideration in supporting my work that way. So have fun playing this great old song. And until next time, I'm Mike Pacelli. Thanks for hanging out with me.